Good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. My name is Jimmy Van Bramer and I'm chairing the committee today in the absence of Chair Ferreris Copeland. I'd like to introduce my colleagues, Councilmember Vanessa Gibson, Councilmember Robert Cornegie, Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, Minority Leader Steve Matteo, and Councilmember Mark Levine. We are all here today to be considering and voting on four items. Number one, a pre-considered intro to amend a definition related to the commercial rent tax, two land use items, and intro 1737, which would establish the Morris Park Business Improvement District. First, we have the pre-considered intro sponsored by Council Member Dan Gorodnik, which would amend for greater clarity the definitions of base rent and total income for purposes of the small business tax credit against the commercial rent tax, which the Council passed on November 30th. Next, we have two land use items. The first is Cooper Square Senior Housing in Councilmember Mendez's district in Manhattan, which would provide a partial five-year Article 11 tax exemption to preserve 151 units of low-income senior housing. The second is the St. Mark's Apartments in Councilmember Cornegie's district in Brooklyn, which would provide a partial 30-year Article 11 tax exemption to preserve 52 units of low-income rental housing. Both council members support these items. Lastly, we have intro 1737, which would establish the Morris Park bid in Councilmember Vaca's district. On October 31st, the committee held a hearing on this legislation at which we heard testimony in support of the bid's establishment from the Department of Small Business Services and other interested parties. Following this hearing, the 30-day period began where property owners who would be impacted by the proposed bid could formally file an objection to the bid plan with the city clerk. According to the city clerk, the number of objections required to prevent the bid's creation were not filed during this period. Therefore, if the committee and the council find in the affirmative on the following four questions today, the bid legislation may be adopted. These questions are, were the notices for all required hearings published and mailed as required by law? Does all the real property within the district's boundaries benefit from the establishment of the district except as otherwise provided by law? Is all the real property benefited included within the limits of the proposed district? And is the establishment of the district in the public interest? Representatives from SBS are here to testify on the establishment of the bid and to answer any questions from the committee before we hear from SBS. We actually are going to go right to SBS because we can't wait to hear from Blaze Backer. And <laughs> Blaze, if you would take the seat. And I believe we have to uh, swear Blaze in. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the committee today and to respond honestly to council member questions? I do. Great. Sorry? I know. Oh, do you not have the, yeah. Do you have it, right? Yeah. Yeah, when we speak to just the objections, it's pretty okay. straightforward. So, not too much content. Why don't you uh, sure. Sorry. start your testimony, please? Um, <laughs> good morning, uh, members of the Finance Committee, um, Majority Leader Van Bramer. I am Michael Blaze Backer, Deputy Commissioner of Neighborhood Development, Department of Small Business Services. I'm joined by Senior Program Manager for Bid Development, Lamel Lindsay. Today we would like to report on the result of the objections filed with the City Clerk against the establishment of the proposed Morris Park Business Improvement District. As required by law, the Morris Park Steering Committee mailed the summary of the City Council resolution to the following parties. To each owner of real property within the proposed district at the address shown on the latest City Assessment Roll. To such other persons as are registered with the City to receive tax bills concerning real property within the district. And to tenants of each building within the proposed district. Furthermore, SBS arranged for the publication of a copy of the summary of the resolution at least once in the city record. At the conclusion of the objection period at 5 p.m. on December 1st, 2017, and taking into consideration any objections postmarked by that date, one valid objection representing less than 1% of the total assessed value was filed with the city clerk for properties within the district. Additionally, one invalid objection was filed with the city clerk for a property outside of the district. This level of objection is within our acceptable threshold needed to advance the bill for a favorable consideration by the full City Council. The Department of Small Business Services supports the establishment of the proposed Morris Park bid. In our judgment, the proposed bid will improve the quality of life and business conditions in the Morris Park District. At this time, happy to take any questions. 
Thank you. Are there any questions on any of today's items from any of the members? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. All items are coupled. Council member Van Bramer. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Cornegie. Aye. Levine. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye and all. Matteo. By a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. Great. We'll keep the roll open for another 15 minutes and remind my colleagues that the committee will be holding a hearing next Monday at 10 a.m. in chambers on IBO's evaluation of the commercial revitalization program. Thank you very much.